the what? What the what? Come here. Come on. Who you got? Huh. 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 Crazy lady. <clears throat> You're a crazy psycho lady. Crazy psycho lady Molly. Are you a crazy lady? I don't know how this works, by the way. If anyone's actually here yet. Hello. You want to boot the snoot? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I don't know how to... Um, Five of your friends. How do I, uh, how do I make, how do I, how do I, how do I do this? <laughs> um, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do the thing with the thing with the people and the other people and the, and the, you know, how do you do it? <laughs> Hello. Molly, how do we do it? Hello to you in New Zealand. Yeah, how do I, uh, like, for when, um, like, Angie and all them, like, how do I do that? <laughs> I've never done that before. See the request. Oh, is there supposed to be a request? This is Molly. So do they have to request? Hey, Sprite. Um, and then how do I see that? Hosts. Host alive with others. Hello, hi, hi everyone. Hello. I don't know if um, I don't know if they're all here yet, but uh, I guess I probably should have looked into that. <laughs> What's up? Hi. This is Molly. This is Mama. This is Molly girl. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. I got to turn off my Wi-Fi because our Wi-Fi sucks. Hello. I'm trying to get the camera on. So I can, I, so more people can come on, right? Yes. You should be able, you should be able to bring five people on. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Oh my God! How are you doing, Mikey? Doing great. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm trying to get my camera on. Where the puppy go? She she bolted. I, I put her. I I, I want to say I put her down, but that's the horrible thing to say about dogs. I placed her <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Here's another one. Oh God, bless it. Oh. Ugh. Okay, so once they come in, oh there you are. Okay, so once they come in, they can request, right? Yes. Okay. I saw yours, so I've never done this before, so. Oh, wow, geez. awesome. What's uh, what's the puppy's name? This one's Riley. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Give me a second. Oh, God. Hello. Hi. Oh, there we go. There's Andy. Okay, hold on. I can invite Angie, right? Yes. Okay, there we go. Hi, Chris. Hello to you in Australia. There's Angie. Okay. It worked. Yay. Woohoo. Hi, Mikey. Hi, how are you? We're good. Thank you. Thank you for this. You're Let's say hi. Of course. This is Mikey. Look who's popping in. Hi. Hi. Is that great? It is. <laughs> hi, great. <laughs> He's eating Chick Fil A. Hey, Mikey, you can always bump me off if you need room for other people. I'll get off. How many people? I can have more than one, or I can have more than like multiple, right? You can have like five or six, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, hold on. I have another request. And I think there's there's also there's options where you can make like Angie or speakers like the main person. Oh, like I can switch the view. Yeah, I think it's oh, okay. um, in the top so right, bad. I think. <laughs> I'm so bad. 
I've always like just my just my big old face. Yeah, well, the the first few minutes is always uh, a little bit of a cluster. That's okay. Can I like move things around, or is it? Are you guys just like stuck right there? I think you can move them around. George, do you know how to do that? Change the view so Angie could be the big one or whoever's talking here. He can switch them. I unfortunately don't. I'm a hundred, so I don't know how these things work, but we'll, we'll make it all work. Hey, Gracie. Hi. Nice to hi, see you. Hi, Gracie. Oh, hi, Gracie. Yeah, wait, come again. <laughs> you might as well move here. I know, I'm going to Google got, it real quick, Mikey, to see if I can figure got, it out. She, she's got Chick-fil-A, so she's like, I'm trying to, she doesn't want to embarrass me. But oh, it, that's like, how I did it. Oh, now you're on big I screen. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, now she's gone. Now we're here. We're <laughs> oh, there she's back. Okay. We made it. Yeah. Ready. Awesome. You good? Can you move that? It's, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? Just eat. You got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm so shiny. <laughs> Just oh, eat. Okay. eat. Yeah, you can eat. That's all good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she runs track. I mean, this girl's got to eat. She she's gonna be up at what time in the morning? Seven. Yeah, we have to be there like seven o'clock every morning. That's it. I didn't even know that time existed. That's uh, same yeah. here. Okay. <laughs> also, Mikey, good to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thanks for uh, hosting. Of course. Yeah, Mikey, thank you. All right. Yes, thank uh, you so much. We've got what a hundred and fifty-ish people in here, so that's pretty cool. Mikey, you're the best for doing this. Thank you. Hey, I try. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I wanted to, uh, you know, I, I, I think the the goal I, I I personally had was like, you know, the more eyes people have on this story, like I feel like the safer you and and, and Gracie and everyone become, because it's like, the more people that know, which means they can't, like, you can't, they can't do anything. Mm -hmm. because now it's everywhere uh and so <laughs> that, that's, that's just how, kind of how i think it. about it thank you for caring about our safety that's how we we've, we've noticed oh, yeah. that that is a trend especially right after gracie went um wanted to go public with her video we automatically yeah. um found that that as she as gracie says it, you know it saved our lives just that just that really just that bit of publicity saved our lives yeah, I mean, like, I, you know, this is obviously I tell true crime stories on here primarily. And so I've told so many stories where, like, people stayed silent, they didn't say anything, or they tried to say something to one person, and then it just kind of it backfired. But now that, like, hundreds of thousands of people, even millions of people, have seen this, there's nothing that these monsters can really do now, because we all, we're all watching them. So... <laughs> and that goes for George too. Like I know, I know you're you are having issues with it as well. So I'm all the way in Arizona. So it's like you know, you guys are there in the thick of things. <laughs> Maybe that's where we should fly to, Arizona. Yeah. Did you say Arizona rules? There. <laughs> we do have a very very good um, friend that um, Harris. Hicks is out in um, at Arizona State. So okay. he's studying. Yeah. What is he studying? Sports. But what sports is it called? The program? I don't know. Yeah, he wants to be a sports broadcaster or analyst. Okay. Well, this is probably the place to do it. Yeah. <laughs> We're very big on sports here. All right. So uh, I guess what did we want to? I know like, I saw we, what, Lindsay what pop wanna... in there. Is she here? I thought. It oh, was is Lindsay in here? If she's in here, we should bring her on. Definitely. Here, I see Cricket too. Yeah. I have, um, room, for two more, I have room for two more people after that too. So. Mama.
I think. Uh-oh. Oh, Why wait. am I so shiny? What is with this light? Ugh. <laughs> I don't like it. I feel like my hey cricket. I feel like my forehead is like. Hey Gracie. Hi. <laughs> How are you? How are you doing, Crazy Gracie? I'm pretty good. How are you? That's good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay, so, so I know it's been uh, a busy like, few days. In... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go, go for it. Go for it. Please, go for it. I just know it's been a busy few days and a lot of moving pieces and everything. And I know that a lot of people here have been following what's going on in the, uh, with, with you, Angie, and Gracie, and George there in Tennessee. Um, just wanted to know, is there anything that you could update us with and um, let us know if there's anything that we can uh, help you guys with? in the last few days. No. <laughs> yeah, we're still fighting really uphill battles. Yeah. <laughs> um it's a uh... I I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um so I think in my videos I mentioned Franklin PD. Is that not right? Franklin it's a different county or whatever it happened in uh, with Grant. Okay. Mm -hmm. ahead, Sorry, I'm like in the middle of eating. Uh, so, so... <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. <laughs> she, wants, she wants to answer. Yes. Uh it's Gallatin. Gallatin. Okay, that's what people told oh, me. I was like, ah. Yep. I'm not used to, like, you know, here in Arizona, it's just, like, big city, big city, big city. And so I'm like, when I hear all these different counties, I, like, I space. I don't I don't think to don't think about, about, like, that. Gallatin and Franklin. Everything but is right it around does the hub like of Gallatin. Nashville. It's so, so it's it does Gallatin, sound like Gallatin, Tennessee. though, is also. Mm -hmm. It's Gallatin, so Gallatin is also not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So they okay. just, like, they just won't do anything no they're they they finished it that day and that's it there was no right, investigation like they, they said it was a parking yeah, lot yeah, incident. Like it, they, the they took aaron's word for it and that was it and so and, and so we have to try to get it reopened before, before the statute of limitations when august 15th it is right well we have two separate we have two separate two separate really almost three cases going so we've got um, we've got Grant's case that um, where that needs to be open for the first time and investigated for the first time, and then Gracie's case uh, there is an open grape case in um, Asheville, North Carolina. The statute of limitations on that is unlimited, and it's an active and open investigation. However. Where the company, which is called the Man Act, and it's transportation of a minor across state lines for uh, essaying, um, right? Uh, that does expire in in August. So, um, so that's the that's the federal charge. That's the federal charge of right. uh, crossing state lines, which was the quickest way to. Uh, kind of stop the momentum of everything and have him in one location, prison wise, et cetera. And um, it doesn't appear that there's movement. If if there's movement at all, we are not aware of it. And I've been in touch with attorneys today. And but um, I'm going to make a, some more calls tomorrow to try to find out if there's any, there was movement. There was movement. And we live in Franklin, Tennessee. So if you're thinking about Nashville as like the hub, Basically, Gallatin and Franklin are opposite direction spider legs of Nashville. They're suburbs up in opposite in the you know east west, or maybe it's south north. I don't know, but no, it is north south. I think, but um, I never cared where Gallatin was until this happened, um, and so the federal government had wanted to locate Gracie on the fifth of June. And they and the Franklin police did that for the federal for the FBI, and they wanted to verify that she was taken across state lines it, that it was her, and mm -hmm. the, you know they came here and they got all the affirmatives yes, and they were to report back to the FBI agent that was in charge and they did but they reported that everything had already been investigated and there was nothing substantial here, so they shut it down. So wait, who, which which police department shut it down? 
Franklin. It was the, the Franklin, Franklin Police Franklin. Department, which is where we live. We live and in- And then what Franklin. about the Asheville? What's that? What? Franklin shut the Franklin shut the FBI down. However, we found out that they shut it down because I asked for the report. So our attorneys, Gracie's attorneys, my our attorney team is got that re, got in touch with the um, F, the FBI agent that was in touch with Franklin, straightened it out. She was in shock, and so right now it's supposed to be still here. Come on. Right well, now it's so right now it's supposed to. <laughs> Right now, it is supposed to be active again, where she is, where this agent once again is trying to get this man act. Um, but her, she said it wasn't her division. Her division was kidnapping. And um, anyway, it's just one thing after another. However, it's open and our attorneys are working on that. That's, but we only have at this point, I think 50, one day, 51 days left for them to, after five years, 51 days left to get that. The, the case in North Carolina, uh is with the, the federal government explain the fbi explained that that is with the state only the states handle okay. great cases and so the and that agent is, that detective is working with me uh right now i'm filling an evidence box for him um and so he's but that's open until he until they decide to shut that down or to bring charges which last year they were prepared to bring charges or indict. So we have and that. Why that's, didn't they? That's yeah, well, why didn't What's they? Um, the, well, the detect he told me that he talked to um, our attorney here, and our attorney at that time told by the end of the call talked him out of it. Oh. Why? It's a very, <laughs> it's a very, it's good. It's the good old boy network, and we thought we were outside of it, right. but we weren't. Fortunately, I found out about it and um, uh, and they are working, but it would have been last June of 2022. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm just providing extra. At that time, after last year, I knew that, that, that our, our attorney or Gracie's attorney came back and did ask for a laundry list of items to be there's Lindsay right there. There's Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> um, for a laundry, sorry, <laughs> but for a laundry list of items to be provided to them, and I didn't, I didn't know the backbone of it, but the backbone was that this detective and the and the assistant district attorney, when they called to tell him they were going to indict, and he talked them out of it, they said, okay, provide us a list of all of these things because we still want to indict. That list got passed to me. So I, I, I took off work for three months and I got that list together for them. Court cases, every court case that Aaron has ever had me in and every county, everything that's ever been, has ever been looked at, every doctor's appointment she's ever had in her entire life, every, everything about Gracie that, that there is on record, school records. I mean, it was a long list and he, he said, but we never got it from your attorney and I went, I took off three months, three months of work to get that prepared for you. So basically, why what do I'm they need now, so much? Why does they need so much? That's a good question. I don't yeah. understand. Gracie did a three and a half hour forensic interview with um, for just for North Carolina, and they had enough in that last June. But then when the, the when the attorney got to them, our attorney, I get either, you know, talk them out of it, tell them they needed more. I don't know, but now they, I don't understand why they can't just go off of that forensic and be done and let her rest yeah. and stop this madness. But now I'm in the process of evidence myself, they're ready for them. It's not going through anyone. Um, I live in North Carolina. I don't know, that I don't know how I can help at all, but like, I don't know. Just saying. It might just be a call to the, um, it's, it's Asheville City Police is where this happened, right there in um, Asheville at a hotel there in Asheville, right on, right in the city limits. Which, oh, and, okay, um, the city limits, I wouldn't know the hotel. Yeah, so. Um, so I know, I know Bill Lee in Tennessee is a whole different thing, but what about the, the North Carolina's governor? I mean, is there any contact with them at all about any of this? 
you know, I think that's a good place to, to go. I, I haven't, I, I looked at that this week, so much other stuff piled on because I'm trying to fill this evidence box again that, but I thought yeah. about, you know, I really need to try to make contact with the governor there to let him know, not just that, but I tried to express to the detective when I was on with him the last time, I was like, this has gone viral. Like this is, this is a story that's being talked about all over the world. And I don't think he got that. I really don't think that, I don't think he got that. Power and I think TikTok, he, man, like when, like when Vengeful sent it to me, I was like, I know the perfect person. Yeah. To well, if, you know, to send to let them, to, Obviously, for them to know more, uh, for, for North Carolina to be more aware, you know, we've made Tennessee so aware, but North Carolina is really the, uh, that's so important for Gracie, but it's yeah. also so important because that that case being say just them saying yes, we're indicting automatically opens every case that's been denied her here in Tennessee and Grant's case because they're tied together. Say, like if, yeah, if if her case is actually taken seriously, then that actually, that actually proves most for what Karen did to Grant. Uh, that's that's right. like, I mean, that's 100% motive. That's right. I mean, it's it's complete. So maybe the maybe we should be reaching out to the governor there, letting him know. I don't know of the, I haven't studied the connections between he, he and Lee. I don't, haven't heard any. I don't, that doesn't mean there aren't any, but, um, right. but, I, but I, I don't, I do think that they need to be lit up there. That they've got this this case is well, in is right there on is right there in their on the edge of their state and, and it's sitting there and where where is where is the dad he's he's just we don't know he's just the monster the monster hasn't even been brought into que being questioned for any of these cases for any of these things because they can't not even him? once or just because they well we saw him a few days ago with the college world the college baseball world series um there's eyes everywhere angie you're an absolute amazing woman i want to say gracie you are one of the strongest uh, young women i've ever ever encountered and as a survivor also and my partner also i just wanted to say she just said she she's just so inspired by you and like, it inspires us to fight harder Yeah, I want to say it takes it takes a lot of courage to speak your story, uh, and the fact that she could do it even at such a young age, that is an inspiration to not only people your age but people like us. Uh, you know, people who have been through trauma and have always been afraid to talk about it, and to see someone like Gracie do that is, I mean, that's eye opening for for a lot of people. <laughs> it really is. I, I don't know. It's, like, it's truly crazy as well because you know I think about it and I'm just like Gracie, you are not you are not just exposing this corruption at Grace Christian and Grace Chapel, but like you're also a survivor of SA and you know and and neglect and I'm just like you know you're you're battling these things that you've experienced, you know, as well as like being such a light for so many people, as well as like taking on some of the most powerful people in the state. And so it's, it's just mind blowing to be in your presence and just, you know, so I'm, we are fighting hard for you. <laughs> yeah, you've got, uh, you've got at least 3 million people on my side uh, uh, who has your back. So that's a lot of people. <laughs> That feels pretty good, doesn't it? Hey, maybe I'd be at three million by now if I was I the camp, like twenty times. <laughs> Just kidding. There's no way. Um, I'm so proud of her, and she also inspires me. There are I days when I'm just like, "Wow!" Some of the yeah. things that she says. She's not a person that has to say something twice. She says it once, and that was all it needed to be said. Mm -hmm. Yep. And awesome. she's lucky that she has a mom that supports her through all this because not not everyone has that. Yeah, you know. I didn't. Yeah, know I mean, to you, like 
to you too, Angie. It's like, you know, to have to have to hear what happened to Gracie and then to have to experience what happened to Grant, to, to still be able to like keep your head up this high and still, you know, be that strong is also extremely admirable. Um, no, like that. Well, <laughs> it's <laughs> it, honest. Honestly, this week has not been as easy for me to keep my head up as high. It's uh, I understand. Yeah, yeah my um, but I always come back meaner. After I, I'll have those moments. <laughs> you should. I have those moments where. <laughs> I, I've had those moments the last couple of days, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. Where I just can't fathom being at the center of this uh, hurricane that my children have been so harmed and hurt. And Grant, we're living here without Grant now. And the pains of all of that is just what um. I've been through and what I... What, Grant went how, through. How long has it been again since? It will be three years. Uh, we just, uh, Grant would have just turned 21 uh, last week and um, it will be three years, July 20th of this year. But it doesn't change. It doesn't matter if it was a day, an hour, a minute. I, you know, I still expect yeah. him to come in. And so when I relive that with her, or just when the gravity of, when I let the load, like, when I let the load sit down on me, I call it. When I let the load I'm carrying sit yeah. down on me, that's when I have to take a break and step back and, you know, sleep it off or just be by myself and get away from everything. Um, and then somewhere in that, my fire is relit to a point that I come back with a much more, much more mean and much more aggressive than I was before. <laughs> but I do, uh, I do have my times when I can't, yeah. Oh, I completely understand. <laughs> I I totally get it. Hey, Mike, so have I, you okay, have so you I'm seen? But you I'm just wondering if you and everyone else has seen um, Lindsay's video of the Franklin police creeping on these yes. brave women yeah. in their backyard. I mean. The audience should know, like they that they and George also are living in 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 constant fight or flight because of the law enforcement there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and was. This is a, like, uh, yeah, sorry. It was ter That was like a, just a terrifying image. Like it was such a a simple kind of image, but it was it was horrifying. Really creepy, that. like the wind chimes and the quiet. Yeah. Uh, it just it gave me chills. Yeah. And I, I just can I just get in here for like one minute. Yeah. Real quick. Hi, Lindsay. Hey, I just, everybody, um, Angie is, we have to, we have to keep going for Angie. She needs a break. She needs a break. She needs to rest. Like she really, she really needs us to be very loud and get in there and fight for her. I've, I've just, we had a call with an attorney the other day and I won't tell the details, but I got a glimpse for a minute of how Angie has been treated. Like I got a whiff, like to, to hear how she's been treated all these years it really i mean we got i got off the phone and i wept all afternoon i don't think anybody has any idea of what she has been through and i still don't we don't know what she's been through what she's still going through and it's so important for all of us to just stay in this and and she needs a break she needs rest so you know? what yeah you know, what i was gonna i was do? gonna say that like you you do have an army now i yes, want i want that yes, to be clear. yes. and she needs uh, to know that <laughs> <laughs> You've got an army uh, at your disposal. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. And thank you. I, I have said this before. It's very hard for me to accept support because we, we, I'm used to fighting alone, you know, especially yeah. for eight years, I was completely alone. Yeah. <laughs> you got to you know, but I do need, I do need help. Lindsay, you can contact me anytime. Okay. If you'd like wow. help with anything. Like, I don't know where to start. I'm not like I'm not like good at this stuff, but I will definitely I will help in any way that I can. Um, I mean, the most important thing is just making this so big that they can't ignore it. 
It's getting the word out and making it so big. She's in Tennessee, so that could help. Hey, we need to. We, you know, we have Sorry. our, we have the GoFundMe. We, we're going to have to pay. We're going to have to have a very high profile attorney before it's over. It's going to have to be a very high profile um, West Coast. West Coast, absolutely. No one in the Southeast. We need high we've, profile. We've done like a lot of homework. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to have can a I, very high profile. Can I ask um, the process of having him exhumed? I know is not like an is not just like a you can't just get permission. You just you have to like. Is that how, I mean, you, you can't just say, please do it. Well, from what I understand the, um, from, no, I can't because Aaron is, um, also a parent. Uh, so he has rights right now, right now oh. he has rights. Again, we need the North Carolina thing to, but yeah. anyway, so I would have to, I would, I'd have to, I'm sure it would not be just, yes, let's exhume him like it should be. You know, if you're worried and you don't know what happened and I don't know what happened, then let's find out. But that's not going to be the way it is. There will be a fight. And so um, so I can file with an attorney to to exhume. But then we would have pro we would end up in court, I'm sure, uh, to exhume. And then it would be an independent autopsy from there. Right. Um, and really, all of that would have would need to be done by high profile because that is what we're dealing with at every level. Um, just like the Franklin police snooping, you know, this is our safe haven. This is, we, yeah. we've never, we, everywhere we've lived before, we've had the police show up and bang on our door to take Gracie and Grant away from me. That was the tactic Aaron used. He used the police. So when they attacked our doors and our backyard like they did, it removed our safe place for us. And it wasn't as if they were coming to talk to a victim, as they said, when we finally, when our attorney finally made con contact with this officer that was looking over the back fence, um, and he, he did, he was, we allowed him to come in, you know, you're a victim and we're here because you're a victim. That's not the way they had treated the house twice. They've been here twice at that point, and both times they treated us like we were fugitives of justice and we we're just a hair away of coming in on us. So it really it, disturbed you just, both you just of knock them. on the door like it was it was a police knock like. Um, like I had to come, I was telling Gracie they don't have a warrant, but at that point I didn't know what Aaron might have done. It was really it was really unnerving, was it? Gracie's the one that's just it's really affected. Um, last week we were both affected here in the house. It was just, um, and they destroyed our, and this is where we live. This is where Grant left that morning and they came, he came in and then they lied on the report and it, it just completely destroyed our sin. Mm -hmm. Um, well, like the cop that was here, he seemed so sincere and he was like, you're going to get like, you uh, like all the crimes. Yeah. Like all the crimes are going to like, you're not alone now. Like we aren't going to fail you, stuff like that. And it just really hurt because he, it, it, he seemed so believable and sincere. And that was like the first, I didn't trust him. I even told mom after he left, I was like, I'm not going to trust him until he actually does something like to prove what he was just talking about. And, uh, well, he did exactly what I thought he would, but for a minute, for a minute there, I really thought he was going to help for a second, but yeah, it was very hurtful too. And so, right. um, yeah, so we know, I guess just going through that too was really exhausting. Um, and then wondering when the next bang or knock, the door might not ever come or will it come this week? I I don't know, but it was just a terrifying situation. And I tried to express to him that this that is how Aaron had always affect. That's how he always controlled us with the police. They, he, he was able to use law enforcement who never get involved in civil and divorce matters, never. But with right. him, he sent him right into the house. And I said, but so that was one whammy. And then the the next was, okay, let's, let's tell them we're going to do all this and then let's lie. 
So. Well, so he's, so the police are protecting him, Everyone. essentially, right? Absolutely. Like that, that's why they're drawing out the statute of, statute of limitations, right? Every, everyone has, and for whatever reason, and in Grant's case, that's, that is a, that is a no brainer. That is a, there's, there's no way possible that the only witness which they used to close the case that his story could be possible, which is his father. Therefore, it's if not, not possible, if, if that brainer, hey, let's let's go back and look at this. Without was he a cop ever? Who? Oh no, no. no someone asked if, if Aaron was. A oh no, he was a a news anchor. He just read off a prompter. Oh well, I mean, they probably he probably has a lot of. He's media. He's got connections. He was media. Yeah, he he's media. Also, was I watched all the videos. I have tied a into bad memory. I forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but but that still means he has big connections. Yes. He's got bigger. Connections. It's not just that he has connections. He has more than connections. I mean, he's sitting in the same same pews and rows in, in Grace Chapel Church as the governor, as district attorneys as you know famous country singers like carrie underwood let's let's not pretend that this okay. man is not one is right. not connected with some of the most powerful people in the south and he also after he had to unceremoniously leave his job because of all these things and other things because he has a history of this behavior you know he he, he got into a scam of being a financial advisor with zero you know qualifications which made his wealth increase so he could be on the same level as some of these people and that's why you see of, him uh, at of epstein a little bit absolutely he, he's at these he, the, he's at like you know um the the masters he's at the college baseball world series which you know that is one if the, you know there was bulletin alerts about the child the the child trafficking problem there and these men all the men that he runs with like and i think that like george you he could help talk about this also with angie because you know he's been a member of grace chapel academy church and you know went there with grant and you know he can also talk about you know to to verify that they use cops and they use their friends like sam johnson to intimidate Gracie and Angie and George, like he just had people outside of his house a little over a week ago where he had to go out there and protect himself and call the police and they found Someone footprints. Said, and this is the, right as when he's the Murdoch case. It's the Murdoch case all over again. It's literally the same thing. Mm -hmm. Very similar. I do want to hey, say, George, can you tell us a little bit about what you had to go through through, you know, this also just because they're, they're doing this to, you know, everyone that, that goes against them. Yeah, and I do want to say this: the the people outside my house the other night, I there's no indication like who it was. Just to like say that for certain. I mean, like I like it, it could be completely yeah. unrelated to this. I mean, um, but you ever had anyone else do that to you before, George? I haven't actually. No. Um, what happened? Yeah, it's, it's very interesting timing. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, what? so did you get like well, swatted? No, it was just like super weird how it happened. So like it was probably like around midnight and I have a house in my college town that I used to live in for like often. I mean, I would stay like a night every week. And um, but long story short, now I'm like stuck with the lease. So like I don't really go there very often, but I was down there and it was like around midnight and I heard the gravel outside, like someone was walking on it and I wasn't shocked or anything because I was like, well, I have neighbors and they're probably just like walking the dog or something. But then I realized that like these footsteps followed up onto our porch. So I was just like, what is happening? And so I uh, a person up that like is that lives there. And I was just like, ah, someone's like outside of our house. I don't really know too much, but I was like, we probably need to like maybe call the police and like have someone come out here and make sure that everything's okay. And so the police came out and they were just like, well, it could just be homeless people. Cause they were like this time of the year, there's a lot of homeless people that 
kind of will like break into cars if it's like near which like it's near the downtown area um and so there's like people will break into cars and stuff or whatever but i mean they found like footprints and stuff as someone was there so it was just like really it was really weird timing to say the least uh are you in, are you in franklin as well yeah so um Yes, I live in Franklin, but this this other house is like in my college town, which is not Franklin. So that's why it was kind of like not. Yeah, like I don't know. It like I wasn't at first. It like freaked me out when I thought about all the options. But you know, looking at it now, I mean, I guess it's okay. Well, why would you even have that thought in your head, George? Because of these people. Oh, I mean, it's true. I mean, like you know, playing into steve berger and robbie mason and like sam johnson i mean these people really tried to like ruin my life like ruin my reputation ruin my chances of going to college like really rip the mat out from under me and kind of like made me out to be this monster to like this small conservative very christian group of people but at the same time it's like this really small conservative group of people at Grace Chapel and Grace Christian Academy, it's it's very cult-like. And so these people are very, what John was saying, I mean, there's some very influential people who attend this church, who have a lot of power and a ton of money. And I think kind of, at least for me, you know, I started my senior year of high school and I just came into this as like a complete outsider. I didn't know a soul. Um, and you know it, it seems that i got connected with some of the worst people you know some of the worst uh worst of the worst to the point where uh there was an incident with sam johnson where there was like alleg accusations that were made that were completely false with evidence that proved that they were false and uh like the police were involved in everything. And like, I even had to go to court because of this. And I went to court where everything was pretty much like, it was a done deal. Like they were like, this is not going anywhere. There's no evidence that that points to any of this stuff. And after like a couple hours, you know, it comes back and like Sam Johnson has talked to the DA and has been very active within court that morning and come back and I'm like charged with a classy misdemeanor uh for something that was like completely basically there were accusations that like i had i had beaten just to like straight up say it and uh it was not true it was like a false accusation there was security camera footage that proved that um as well as just you know my lawyer and the da even went to the extent of saying that uh sam johnson's daughter was dramatic within the entire situation and that this wouldn't go anywhere and came back and it did go somewhere, uh, which like, I don't know if to do that, but I sure do know is that I got accused of something that I never did and charged with a very low misdemeanor for something like a completely unrelated charge to that situation if that why, makes sense why is it that it's always these christian mm. schools that i hear about like doing these you know what I mean? it's just like well i think i know the answer but it's money and power really yeah I but know, i mean but it's like <sighs> I don't know. And I mean, like, that's the thing, you know, like, looking and I'm at really somebody. sorry about what happened to you, George. And by the way, every video that I do out of yours gets taken down for a CGV. That's so. weird. Yeah, I had one of those too. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> like a guy. Yeah, I actually, I got a violation also. You got to be careful kind of when you like, um, Mm -mm. I think yeah, when you but, use the uh, but mine were just duets and I got violations. Me too. Yeah, just duetting. So, because okay. George oh, says jo George says drops names. <laughs> back to the, back back I to the topic. Get, I didn't get a violation, George. That's good. I'm glad to know. <laughs> okay, that, back yeah. to the topic. Sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> but I mean, it's scary. It really is. Because I mean, like, I mean, Sam Johnson is like Aaron Solomon's best friend. 
you know, and hey, wait, wait. So who is what does who is he now in all this? Like, what is his role? So he's there for sir. Yeah, so, like I mean, is he the head of like the church or? No, so you, Sam you Dar- can see him. He he went a little bit viral up to graduation. He decided to wear a dress to his graduation. He uh, he spews hate. He uh, uses intimidation of his dogs on Gracie and Angie. Um, and yeah, he's a he's a giant, uh, scared little white man who like is hiding behind you know his his religion and his friends and buddies yeah. and riding that coattail because he's a nobody to be honest he's just willing to do things for these men yeah. that's my opinion oh, sorry one, one, one of those he's like a hired grunt yeah he was there yeah the, the week after grant passed and the saturday was his service and then the that monday let's see was when i asked to see the truck so i was videoing all of that and videoing the interaction with Aaron. And then on Tuesday, uh, Melanie, my friend Melanie, asked for um, Aaron to bring the truck back to Gallatin so that we could get in and test it. And he agreed, we made a deal with him on that, that he could come and see all the funeral flowers. He was obsessed with that. So anyway, but when we arrived in Gallatin at the scene, there was someone in the passenger seat and Sam Johnson got out of my son's truck that had supposedly killed him. And he stayed Angie, right can on I, top. Can I ask you what, I have a feeling like I have like this understanding of what I think happened to him, but what is what is the consensus on your end about what actually happened that day? And we have several theories, but the it bottom makes one- makes absolutely no fucking sense. What well, they're claiming. None of the no seven or eight sense. stories that Aaron or the only witness has told make sense. Um, they're they violate physics, gravity. Yeah, um, yeah. Com- they violate common sense. They violate the laws of medicine. However, the one that doesn't is where all the evidence is, which is in the ditch. You know, everything happened there. Um, I think Grant was thrown into that ditch and then um, either Grant rolled over or they rolled that he Aaron and possibly someone with him rolled him over. And then they pulled the truck in from the bottom. Hold on, the- hold on. Who's is this just one theory? No, I mean, we there's the, the here's what we don't here's what we absolutely know. Grant was already in the ditch and then the truck was pulled over him. Okay. Over him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the only witness that he had, the only injury that Grant had was a, he did have a bruise to the left cheek, but he also had a blow to the occipital bone and an, an open uh, skull fracture. Was it just, I mean, I know the autopsy wasn't done. So was this just one confirmed blow or were there like, because they didn't check skull fractures, right? Because it, it there said, could be more than one. Right. Is just a blunt force trauma? Marked the spot when I went when I got to the hospital. The nurses told me that it was an occipital uh, blow, and then I met with the paramedics the week after that. And the paramedics told me they thought he had when they arrived. They thought he had a basilar skull fracture because there was cerebral spinal fluid and pardon me if someone's squeamish, but blood coming out of his nose and his ears. And the two together are generally a sign that you've got a a basal skull fracture, which to relate that to someone we'd all know is Dale Earnhardt Sr. Uh, in the race car died of a basal skull fracture yeah. from the pop of his head, which is basically a hard blow to the back of the head. But his was more of a, when he hit the wall, his head would have gone forward. Okay, so the way, the way I, so his truck, this was Grant's truck, right? And it was parked at the top where that building is. So Aaron says, and Aaron is saying, we have no evidence that his well, truck ever made so it. What he's saying is, what he's saying is, is the truck rolled down and ran him over and then dragged him down the hill. It dragged him all that it, yeah, that it dragged him. So where in that, where in that scenario would he have gotten blunt force trauma to the back of his head? It wouldn't have been. It would have been a different type. If he had gotten head injury, it would have been a different right. type, which is not the call. It's not mm-hmm. called blunt force. Mikey, will you mod me? 
Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. My phone's my phone's not working so well, so I'm people I'm not are, really able to get the comments so much. Here Tara's helping. Some shit, and I'm just not gonna. Yeah, just just making sure. How do I do? Thank sorry, you. Angie. Um, I like. I know that I don't ha I I don't know all that much, but to me, it sounds like that after two years of not having to see that monster, when they pulled in. It was already planned, but like he confronted, he confronted Grant or whatever, or whatever started it. It seems like that bruise might have been a blow, and maybe someone else came behind him. I think the bruise is the first blow that was he, he was cold cocked, and his glasses were broken. Yeah. And because the glasses um, did what they're supposed to in a sports injury, their sports goggles, the the left lens popped out. And then the force of the impact is supposed to knock the left, the uh, right uh, arm off. And that's exactly what happened. Boom. This was knocked out. That arm fell off. But everything and else was the glasses, intense. The glasses were by the ditch, right? They're on the grass near the sidewalk. So if they fell off at the top, how on earth do they get down Correct. there? Correct. You recovered the glass and the phone, right? That wasn't even recovered by the by the law enforcement during their first initial. Am I wrong uh, about that? Or might be. How are we better investigators without even seeing the scene than the actual police that were there investigating? Like that's where it's like the police didn't mm, investigate cricket. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like obviously, it was 45 minutes. Obviously, they 45 didn't. minutes. No, I mean he told me. I said, how long did the investigation last? We didn't do one. We didn't need one. Like, oh my God. I would. Oh. I said, how because long, anyone, was, anyone how long did it with... take to do the accident reconstruction? We didn't do right. one. I said, well, then who's in charge of accident reconstruction? Because that was going to be my next call. And he said, I am. That's my thing is like, they have to, they have to test this. And if they test it, like, like you said earlier, gravity does not work the way they're suggesting or the way that yeah. Aaron suggests Wait, it happened. Uh, because did they, somebody in the comments said, did they tell you why there was no need for an investigation? Like, I watched the videos. I just, it's yeah, been... Yeah, he said it was a, a parking lot incident and they took the word of the only witness and closed the case. There was, He had no Got nothing it. else to say to me and he hung up on me. You know what my biggest... Let's make it clear. There was three, the there was three, three witnesses... Was, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mikey. Sorry. So the, the way that Grant was faced, his feet were pointing towards the road, correct? So if he's at the top of the hill and a truck, his truck backs into him, how does he flip? How does he spin around? He doesn't. And I'll tell you Listen, something. Listen, that's why I got anyone that in, the, in this audience. Sense. I know, guys, just real quickly, anyone in the audience who's hearing this, this is why the GoFundMe's are important because the law enforcement not do accident reconstructions. Law enforcement are not doing any investigation, so that falls on Angie and us. And like, like, like uh, Lindsay said earlier, like Gracie should not have to be continuing to tell her story, and Angie needs to be able to 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 do some self care and rest. So, like. While we're so talking we about this, like, remember, the more you spread this to people, a dollar. Like, if everyone can throw in a dollar towards this GoFundMe, like, Mikey, whatever you can do, this accident reconstruction Mikey, is it's, so it's in your profile, important. right? So you can just click on the – you can just click on – is it in there? It's in my link tree. I have uh, – I think I have yeah. uh, two or three yeah. of the link – the the thing yeah, you guys Justin, have yeah it's in my link Justin tree for grant is the gofundme and so every penny of that go to his link tree and if you have a dollar i'm broke cricket will you help me my link tree so i can put a bunch of them I'll, in there i'll give some money what can you help me set up that link tree because i'm tech challenged and i want to make sure that if anyone goes yeah. to mine they can go straight oh. to uh yeah, Justice you, for Grant oh, you, you don't have one? Oh, yeah, I got you. I can make you one. I've made my, my, many, many a people link trees. <laughs> many, Thank uh, you so much. We'll talk about it after. Sorry, guys. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. guys, we have to. But that's, I can do that's accident reconstruction with like Hot Wheels, for God's sake. Oh, there's a, there's a, <laughs> I mean, it's just a, 
I mean, Lindsay just to prove it's not possible, like... like... No, it's not, it's not possible, I mean, but... Sakes, the hill, the hill that they're saying is the steep hill it would have... There, what, there's not enough hill for there to be speed to build up, for God's sakes. To... No. To plow a person over, and it just... It's just well, so frustrating. And the truck, guys, the truck was a, the truck had no, like it was that not Angie, you can be more because I don't know all the details, but like the truck is impossible. Right. Well, and yeah, also, and had forensics it just doesn't even truck. make sense physically. Like, like, it, 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 sorry that I keep saying that. I just cannot wrap my brain around. I I watch a lot a lot of law and order like that they would go to a scene like that and just be like oh uh, this, well yeah also just you know yeah i mean listen over. i'm i'm not a i'm not a forensic expert i'm not an expert in name this but i have told over 2000 stories right about true crime and i'm like i have i know enough to know how these things at least work and how they make sense or they don't make sense and i've watched enough forensic files to know like how easy it is to disprove the things that Aaron is saying happened. And it just takes someone actually disproving it to actually like do the work, like the higher ups, I mean, like the officials, uh, it would take them nothing to, to realize you don't even have to do a, a, an accident reconstruction. I mean, you can just look at it and go, yeah, that's not possible. Boom. Okay. Right. Let's look more into this then. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the thing is that they, they won't even do the basics and that now falls among all these other things, including her, uh, you know, having to make sure that this statute of limitation doesn't run out for Gracie on August 15th, on top of trying to make sure these lawyers are being honest with her, unlike the last ones who were in the old boys club, you know, in, in trying to make sure that her, Gracie and George, and anyone else who Franklin who comes forward is going to be safe. Now she's got to figure out how to do her accident reconstruction. It falls on her. And that's what happens with victims. Like when there's these powerful men in power is that, it, you know, if law enforcement is protecting them, it falls 99.9% .9 of victims have no shot at getting any type of help like this, we have to like come together to show this can be done. Victims can be protected. Victims can have eyes on them. Um, the entire chat do is doesn't want anyone else to speak, and um, they want Angie to tell her story. So I guess let's let her do that. I'll go on mute. That. Oh. Um, I think that the, you know, what my goal has to be is to for Grant is to have to. I've got to do my own investigation. And that does include what John was talking about. So it's, it's, um, for the first thing is the answers are with Grant and he is intact. So, um, the, the exhumation, um, has to occur and the autopsy with an independent, um, well-known examiner has to occur. Uh, including in that has to be an accident reconstruction because they will demand that for court. And I do have the vehicle, even though he, Aaron tried to, they tried to, he and his father, um, stepfather, what, father, tried to total it. Um, they basically popped off a gas cap. And I mean, I could have done that with a crowbar, all the, what, they, what they've done. The insurance agent took that, paid them off, and they put it on the auction block. But we've, one of my friends tenaciously searched that VIN every night and found it. And we've got that in our possession now. Gracie and I picked it up and... We covered it up to bring it through Franklin because we knew everyone would recognize Grant's vehicle. So um, it's hidden now. And um, that's a story in itself. So we have everything except an open investigation. And we've even got, you know, we've got uh, a FOIA um, and, and a tenacious reporter, Alex Willis. We have the FOIA between Governor Bill Lee. And so it's gone all the way to the top. So when you say, is anyone going to open this case? The answer is no even when the governor and his chief of counsel is preparing for a, a one of his, he doesn't do many press conferences, so one of the only ones he does, they're preparing him for questions about Grant. And in that, this chief counsel tells him that um, this is, that he's prepping him and saying Grant Solomon's uh, death is a homicide. Okay, 
We haven't heard that before, but you hear now we're hearing in the highest ranks of the government and that it had already been investigated. Well, now that chief of chief counsel is the attorney general, we went back to the attorney general to say, can you please open the case? He said, it's a homicide. It's never been investigated. He claims he doesn't have the power to do that. That's an absolute 100% lie. The attorney general has the power to do anything. So I'm going to do it myself. And then it's got to be some, then we're going to have to get it into court in the state of Tennessee. You can actually go to a grand jury yourself and ask for an indictment. So, um, you can, it's a, it's an old, old law in the books, but I'll also tell you that we've got, um, you know, right now there, right now we've got people fighting against FOIA, Jack Johnson, the Senator, who's, whose wife ruled ruled in family court that I couldn't file anything else against Aaron to protect my children for the next um, six years. And that would have been when, till Gracie was 18 and three months later, Grant was dead. Um, he's he's the, he's the Senate majority leader in, um, and very with the same people that we've already mentioned before that George mentioned. So when you talk about the school and the church, you're basically talking about the hub Everyone that's in a powerful position in the in the state capitol came out of that one little church hub, or was or was like the sheriff that 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 Steve Berger used regularly to come to protect him. So they all came out of this little teeny teeny hub that's not even got a zip code on the map, and they're and now they're all in this high positions of power and. Um, this and Jack Johnson is right right now. Uh, Ashley Judd is lobbying with Jack Johnson to have the if a death is ruled an accident, then they want families not to be able to access FOIA. So that's what's getting ready to happen in the state of Tennessee. And if I hadn't been able to access FOIA, I would have no information. There would be no opportunity to turn this over. So don't think that that. I know that's stemming from their own family and I'm sorry for what happened, but re removing the ability for people to, for people like me to ask for FOIA records would have left me completely in the dark and there's no way to do the things I'm doing. Like there'd be no reason to do an investigation. There would be no reason because at that point it's just, you're going to get shut down. That's what they're trying to do in the state now is prevent people like me from being able to continue to do my own investigation based on FOIA and FOIA is telling off on them. We've got the governor saying it's a homicide. We have, and then the key words in everything, everything is that, and it's already been investigated. And I really caught on to that after Franklin Police Department was here and I filed that file for the report to read it. And when I read it, what was sent to the FBI agent was, there was nothing of substantiation here and everything has already been investigated. Nothing's been investigated, but uh, th th those two phrases are how they get away from away with everything. Because it's, if it's not been investigated and I'm the governor and I see, oh, this has already been investigated, then all of a sudden I'm not responsible for what happens because someone else did this and I'm trusting the information that I've been given. So this is, this is the way they cover up in the corruption piece in the state and they all rely on these things. And my, both of my children's crimes against them are the, the worst crimes that happen to be both of them. And, they, and they're just walking around saying they're already been investigated. So the other thing that I want to do is approach, I want them to produce to me these investigations because the governor can't and Franklin Police Department can't. No one can produce to me the investigations that have already been done because there are none. And I've already had people like that have- no, There's no paper trail. No, there's no people, there's no paper trail, there's nothing. We even had people there's investigate- no, like, all of it. Even had people investigate all of the things where they said Gracie's was investigated. And she came back and said, she looked behind the wall. So the DCS says this is investigated and shut down so many times when if they had just stepped up once, I know how we're the 50th state out of 50 when it comes to DCS and my children should have never been in a DCS setting, but it was who, who was continued to ask to go check and to investigate what had happened to Gracie and Grant and they would go and 
come back and say it's already been investigated. But we had a DCS employee who was just like, so we that every case that was investigated, there's no one behind it. It's all a smoke screen. There's no person that's ever investigated anything for Gracie, except we have an open case in North Carolina. And back to Grant's case, that case is, Grant's case is so, I mean, I'm a pharmacist. I worked in level one trauma. You do not have to be a medical personnel. You do not have to have ever even stepped foot into level one trauma to, to realize that the stories told are not possible or probable. So therefore, in most cases, everyone wants to know what happened to a child. But in this case, no. I'm being fought. And like George was talking about, I'm not just being fought. Like we're, hey, I'm, we are, and that's fine with me. Hate me, please. But they are hating on hating Gracie and I for trying to find out or for trying to get justice for her. And like well, this is that's because my children's situation ties into something much bigger. Yeah. But I don't care about the bigger. I'm concerned about what happened to them. But for some reason, no one cares. They they would rather they want I thought the people in high places are fighting us. But there's also people within this this community that George mentioned, this GCA, Grace Chapel, that will actually look at us and run. Yeah. Run. Which, like, this is a place, I mean, Franklin, for people that don't know, this is, like, a very, very wealthy part of Tennessee. Probably, like, one of the more wealthier places in the United States. And there's a lot of celebrities that live here. Out, I mean, far outside of country music, there are people, and Franklin is kind of in this bubble as to where uh, the schools are immaculate. Uh, there are some. There are also like very, very expensive private schools. I mean, like they're like extremely big homes. I mean, just like a bubble, you know, very far from the reality of the world, and. I, th I just think that it's crazy, you know, being in this community of people and like going to a Christian school at the time and going to this church, Grace Chapel at the time, you know, it's like, these are the people that go to this school and go to this church are very Christian, very, very Christian. And just very like, I don't know. It blows my mind that people do not blow a gasket that a a little girl and a mother are having to do this by themselves. You know, like this is the kind of town, I guess what I'm trying to say is where you would expect the community of people to really rise up and, and want to find justice. And even to point this out too, I mean, Grant and Gracie are white children living in a very rich part of Tennessee. You know, I mean, like these are the kind of people that you'd expect to be investigated, um, yeah. especially in a town like this, you know, especially using God, using the church and, and Christianity as a whole, just as like a tool of manipulation in this circumstance, at least. Um, it's mind blowing. Yeah. And I think like Angie's saying, you know, it's, it's like the community is just like coming after them. You know, it's like these people that, that don't want to be outed in the school that are even just acquaintances and friends with people that go to this school or go to this church it seems like the links that they're going to to cover this up it it, it it's mind-blowing like it's something that i've never i've only seen this in movies you know what i'm saying like this and is you know, not how and yeah. george to your point that is because a lot of the lower hanging fruit uh, sorry, we have two boxers and one is really wanting out of his kennel right now. It, we're not getting, no one's breaking in here. <laughs> this is, that's Max. That's Max. And Max, like, is, is okay. Max just turned one and Max is, he, Gracie's sitting right there with Max, but Max is still not happy. <laughs> you can let him out if you want to. I know, but they can see our support dogs. She's gonna, she's gonna let him out, get ready. But, well, you could open the back door too. And, yeah. Hi, Bobby. Come here, say hi. Yes, I know. Oh, so hi. Say hi, everybody. 
everybody. <laughs> Hello. Um, okay, come on. Let's take a, go get it. Say uh -oh. hi. Oh my goodness. That's, and that's Trevor. We'll let you out too, okay? Yes. Okay, let's go inside. Go inside. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Go. He's a handful. Now he's in the Chick fil A. The Chick fil A is Looks go. like a guy's got some money. Uh, well, we've got you guys two, got some muscle two, there two at least. Big boxers. <laughs> Yes, we have two big ones that don't, and he just, this one, he just does not like to be separated by distance at all. Even the kennel is like, uh-uh. <laughs> They're very loud, too, if someone does not. At least that's good, so. Yeah, here he comes again. I've got eight dogs, I totally get it. <laughs> but um, to George's point, the lower hanging fruit, you know, I firmly believe their fear is because they tr the way they treated us, me, Grant, and Gracie, so horribly during what they thought was a divorce where Aaron had smeared my name that I was addicted to drugs and mentally ill and suicidal and some sort of monster with horns. And, um, and they really enjoyed, this group really enjoyed um, trashing my name, trashing me. One day I was a basketball coach for the school um, for the girls, I played in college and I was coaching the basketball team. And the next day I was, um, you know, excommunicated. I was, uh, no one, no one talked to me. No one reached out to me. Um, Aaron had taken the children. He had started a narrative. And that's one of the reasons that some of them hide from me now, because they know we, I know I saw them and they realize I'm not who he, I, he said I was. So they know, I, I know what they've said. Um, I could care less what they've said. But at first, it really destroyed me because I, because it's really difficult when an entire organization of people come at you with like, I, I love the movie, Shrek was one of my favorite movies, but there's a scene in there where they're all coming at him with the lit, uh, what, like, what are those drawers? Like, I don't know if you know, but like the lit, what are they called, Gracie? Mm -hmm. Like Shrek, when they come at him with the lit, the, the, um, I don't know. Yes. Okay. Like wait. Torch? Does anybody watch Shrek? The yeah, torches, sure. where they come, where, you know, where they gang up on people back in the <laughs> in the 1800s, and they come at them with torches and they chase them out of town. That's the way I felt. And a lot of them held those torches. Torches. Yes. Run me out, run me out of town. <laughs> so it's the, if they had, they wouldn't be acting the way they were today if they hadn't treated us the way they did during those eight years that we were trapped in the GCA system. And no one was listening to my children, but they were looking at them. We have people that have come forward that have been brave enough to say, I saw Grant and Gracie and I saw the suffering. I thought someone else would do something about it. I thought it was because their mother was so sick. I thought it was because I've been a pharmacist the whole time. So this whole thing is ludicrous, but now they're coming forward going, I saw them. And so a lot of it is fear of what they've done to us on the low hanging fruit being exposed. Yeah. And so that's part of it. And right. the same for George. A lot of it is uh, a lot of the fear and the way they treat us now um, and the way they want everybody silenced is because it might come out the way they treated us and everyone as a whole treated us. And if that comes out, then they're going to look bad. Well, I don't care what, how you yeah. look. I don't care about you, but I know what you're doing. <laughs> And I know why you want people like George silence. And I know why you want people like Gracie and I silence because it ruin your image as a Christian. And like these people, but you aren't a Christian anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, these people went, I mean, <laughs> like these people contacted Angie, you know, when I first started talking about Grant, uh, you know, Sam Johnson's daughter has contacted my college, uh, contacted, previous partners that I've had. I mean, pretty much a slew. And what has happened is has created this narrative of how I've, I'm just like this terrible person and I'm a terrible Christian and I'm like this abusive, mean, like monster. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And, and like, <laughs> um, pretty much just like, like, tries to follow me with it to an extent where like, I don't know, like we dated in high school and it's 
been years and I'm like, you're still trying to make these accusations after. They don't let go. Yeah. And I, because, I think it's that, because they know what they've done. They know they're wrong. Exactly. And so they need you guys yeah. to like <laughs> go away. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I'm at a place now where I, I think like, at least with the Franklin community, it's like, I, and I'll be the first to say this too. I mean, like I came to a realization, you know, as a kid, like, cause I went to high school with Grant and from my perspective, you know, part of me was just like, well, there's nothing that I can do to like help them whatsoever. I was like my, you know, at the time I was just like, I mean, I, I don't know what I can do. And then also I was like, they did a really good job of within the community at first of, of really covering it up and making it sound like it was an accident. Cause like, I thoroughly believed it was an accident for a long time. You know, I never knew any of this stuff until Gracie's video came out along probably with the rest of us. But, um, God, I lost my train of thought. George, do you think uh, Mary might be a little bit – part of this is is the fact that you never – I mean, obviously, you, you finally – you know, you felt safe enough to, and brave enough to come out um, as, you know, an openly gay man. Like, do you think Mary maybe, like, part of this is her just revenge almost? Like, there's such petty, evil people, it seems. Like, they'll do – anything to to try they'll use anything they possibly can and hold any possible grudge and anger and that doesn't seem very christian to me not of god no no i don't think so but you know and like i i have to watch it because it's like these uh people um like know my weakness know the things that will trigger me emotionally know the things that i've gone through and know how to like manipulate that into a narrative that will just that will destroy me emotionally and so i think spiritually i i had to realize and it's taken a lot of time to realize like that is not the normal that is like the extreme you know what i'm saying like 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 this is the extreme of what uh this religion and these type of people are you know and i think that it was used in in very controlling ways. Cause I mean, looking back, it's weird. It was like, I wasn't even that, I mean, yes, I was very involved in the church and like image wise, like I was on, st I was leading worship and like doing all these things. But on the inside, it was like, I just, I didn't know much. And like, I, I wasn't that concerned about it. And I think like these people within this church and the school have a great way of kind of of outcasting you to a point where you start to believe that like you're a bad person or you're a bad Christian or like you don't fit in or like you're an awful sinner who needs saving. And I think even now, I mean, like I've, I've gotten emails, uh, from Sam Johnson's kid, um, within the last year and like within those emails, um, there is, there's extreme homophobia, uh, to the point of where like, you know, uh, they describe like how I'm still running and how like I have let so many people down and how like I'm a disgrace for coming out and being gay and leaving the church. And how, like, I have been abusive to people in the congregation and I'm abusive to my family and I've been abusive to them. Just like all this, all this crazy shit that honestly reading it, I'm, you know, I really saw blatantly like, whoa, like this is, this is a very strong force. This is a very, very strong spiritual force that is used in very like demonic and just plain evil ways. And yeah. And I, and like, I know that. And I think like, it's taken me a long time to become aware of, aware of that. But I mean, I'll be the first to say like, I'm not. Like I don't associate with, with a church. I don't associate really publicly with, I don't really share my, my religious beliefs anymore because of uh, being around that school, being in that church, seeing how these people will really treat people behind a closed door. You know, like 
that's, I don't know, because it's scary, you know, and then you factor in this, this part where there's so much money and there's so many influential people. It almost just feels like you are fighting like an uphill battle that you're, that you're never going to win to an extent. But I, I think now, like to conclude what I've been saying, like, I think from like a, a, a high schooler viewpoint who went to school with Grant, it just hit me at a point where I was like, no one is talking about this. And I, and I think it clicked where I was like, I've thought for like a couple of years now that people will have to start looking at this. Like someone's going to have to investigate this surely, you know? And then like the dots started connecting to like, Oh wow. Like the same people who tried to ruin my life and smear Christian community are the same people that is doing this to Angie and Gracie, the same people that are covering up Grant's murder, you know, and then, you factor in the point that these people are just like so involved within this church and it's 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 a cult you know to the to a full extent i mean traumatizing these people are yeah yep you know and you know to even yep. to add to add on to that um it, it didn't just stop when grant passed they piled on um, the, his baseball coach, Grant was a very good baseball player. And, um, I wanted, he had pitched that he had pitched their team into the state tournament, to, the, it was win or go home. And they brought Grant in after he'd had a, a shoulder injury and, uh, coach asked him if he had just give me one inning at a time. And Grant said, I've got seven. And he threw against the, uh, last year's state champions and the, the, I mean, he pitched a hell of a game and, and it was just amazing to watch him work that night and we, they won. So he pitched them as far as they've ever gotten, as far as the school has ever gone in a, uh, in the state tournament. And that ball that he used just happened to be in his glove when I was, we were homeless at that time. And I was at the, a laundromat washing clothes and it fell out and I sent him a text. I was like, is this the ball you threw with, the pitched with at the state? He's like, yes, take care of my ball, mama. And I have that text. And I, but I wanted that ball on the memorial at, on stage or, you know, they call it a celebration of life. It's a funeral. And, um, but I wanted it on the stage with all of his, all of his baseball gear that they had out. They had a basketball, and a baseball and everything had come from the, here at the house. And when everything came back to me, the baseball wasn't there. And this was a very important, over the years because of what Aaron's done and, and when he took the children and then left, uh, a lot of, I learned to stop worrying about material things because I couldn't keep up with all of them. So I stopped trying, but that was a material thing that I, was very attached very attached to was very attached to but um so that was saturday we had uh the service was on the saturday and i, I can't find the ball that I, evening i look everywhere in the car i look again i call the people that brought everything back to me who are also members of that church anyway long story short i just started texting the baseball coach at the school who is also like head financial Brad Meyer. he brings in the money huh Brad Myers. That's right. I started coaching, co texting Brad, and I started asking if he knew where the ball was. And listen, I am not even able that Monday. I couldn't even get out of bed that morning because it was like, God, Grant's not here. It's been a week. And anyway, but I was texting, asking for that ball. And finally, he admits to me like weeks later after me begging that he took it off the memorial stand. Just took it himself, stole it. So they still have that ball and they still have uh grant's three jerseys we let them borrow them for the season myers and gracie said don't put them. i thought grant would want his teammates to have them um so we we gave them to him they still have those three jerseys it's been three years they've got his baseball and they've got three jerseys they've got things that belong to us 
in our home, they've hurt us more because they kept, Gracie slept in those jerseys to, to be comforted. But when I finally, I made contact, Brad, I, Brad would not return any text or any call. And then I just went on up the ladder. I tagged the head, the athletic director, Lynn McNatt, who I thought would help. He's like, that's Brad's program. There's nothing I can do. All right. And then I went on up to Robbie Mason and tagged him in all my correspondences and all the text, all the proof. Robbie Mason's response was, you'll need, you can get an attorney if you want those things back. We'll work with an attorney. And Gracie is sitting beside me and she says, tell him that those are our things and you don't get attorney attorneys to get your things back. But right now today, at that time, I, I, I still don't have an attorney. Gracie has the attorney. But I, I told them, I don't have an attorney. I, I, but I will talk to your attorney. I'll do it pro se. I've done everything else pro se. No, that wasn't an option. So they want me to hire an attorney to get the things they've stolen back. That are So that school, in all the cease and desist letters they've sent, and all the nasty things they've done and all the nasty things they've told the children there not to talk about Grant and Gracie as much as the children there loved Grant and Gracie. Oh, how much they loved them. All those things, there's, they are in, in behind the scenes to show you what kind of people they really are behind the scenes. They're withholding Grant's personal for to hurt us more because they have. <laughs> They're not being like publicly displayed. They're just hidden somewhere. No, there is no public. There's right? No way to pub. No, there is no way. So, to so they just have them, them, and they're. They have them, and this past Christmas, uh, in September, Robbie, I, I had just, I was trying to do what Grant would say, which is, "Mama, let it go." Grant was the Grant was always like, "Mama, you know, God sees, let it go." So I was trying to do the Grant thing. That's not easy for mama. And uh, that's where we were made differently. Grant was always, and I was always ready to go. And, um, but Robbie re had reached out um, that he had the items and that any an email and that he would, you know, and I was so relieved that he had them and that he was offering to talk to me about getting them back to me. And then the next thing he said was, you know, your attorney can talk to ours. I said, I don't have an attorney. So, and I wasn't going to make an agreement for someone else just to pick them up because that ball is unique and special. And I want to see these things before I sign off on some random person picking these items up from the school. So it, everything got shut down. So even today, we're almost at three years. They've gone through what, two, two, Grace, is it two baseball seasons or three? Two baseball seasons. Two. Since Grant, yeah, no three, no two, two baseball seasons. And they still have, I mean, they, they have, I don't know how to stress that enough. They have Grant's personal belongings that they took one off of the stand of the memorial, the funeral. And they have them today and that's nothing but deep to insert deep pain on Gracie and I. I, I beg them at Christmas time every year, can I please have the jerseys to put under the tree for Gracie? She used to sleep in them. There's Jersey day at Franklin High School. Grant, she'd like to wear Grant's jersey. No responses to any of this. They've just, this ball I've seen on the text. So I just want to, I want to make that point that while they've been sending cease and desist, wanting everybody to be quiet, and they've got all their followers at GCA treating us the way they are. They they have Grant's things. Who would do that? I mean, there's Grant. Grant's gone. Who would who would do that? You know, they've already done enough, but who would do that to the mother and sister? I cannot. Those are heartless people. Those are heartless, godless people. Maybe TikTok, we can let Maybe TikTok, we can let Grace Chapel, Grace Chapel Academy and Robbie Nate Mason know that Grant and Gra I mean, Gracie and, and Angie want their things back, and them holding it is a disgrace and an embarrassment. Well, I mean, and, and the, I, I mean, I'm not. I know she's not asking this, but I'm asking this. Yeah. Anyone out there who can help me do this, like, 
And all the people let's call them out on this. This is this is absolutely that, insane. All the people Sorry. that know that we are talking about, and this group of Grace Christian Academy, that this group of people who are angry at us because we're speaking truth about the school. If they had not wanted, if they wanted us to say something different, they would have treated us differently. All of those people do, yeah, stole from Grant, stole from Grant and I, that Grace Christian is holding, withholding Grant's belongings. You know, that's just you. And they need to know. Do they have a TikTok? Do they have a TikTok page? That I do not know because I have you know? just been uh, indoctrinated to this TikTok thing. Probably no. <laughs> okay, I just want to say this real quick. There, there are probably people they watch. They watch, right? Yes. There's probably somebody on this live who's like they're really angry about what's being said here. But like, if you don't want people to say that your church aids and abets perverts and pedophiles and murders, then stop aiding and abetting perverts and pedophiles and murders. It's real fucking simple. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, if you're watching. Hi, we see you too. Wait, Gracie, come on. Wait, go ahead, Gracie. Do that again. <laughs> this is Gracie did. I was just clapping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is the whole point. That's the whole point. But you yeah. know, th there's that, and then also there was a. Uh, what was the other thing that they? Well, that's the big thing. The other thing that I just wanted to bring up. Um, we were talking about, go and this is going backward, but yes, if we want to blow them up on TikTok, that's fine. Because I just think the whole, the whole place needs to know, Hey, you know, cause that should bother somebody. If that was somebody's kid and they stole from yeah. the memorial, it should yeah. bother somebody that they'll do it to you. I've never even been, I mean, I grew up in a, a country town in Jackson County, which wonderful people. I've never heard of anybody's, I mean, I've heard about it like on Mayberry where people would steal, you know, from the uh the, something off the the jewelry or something but i've never actually experienced it in my life where someone stole from basically the casket that's insane and brad, and brad said i just took it i i, I took it myself I will, will not return them so i've got I'm prepared to get an attorney to you know and things are um the attorney suggested uh general sessions he suggested theft to file theft because yeah, I mean, what it is, but these what they people do. that support them, you guys have grants things. So, uh, and what they've done is at first, you know, they, they've just, they've hurt us. They, they hurt us worse. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention briefly was that um, I found out this week that um, right after Grant passed, Aaron started calling his male friends. Um, one of them were my, was, is one of my, uh, best friend's husband's ex-husband and he was calling them the week of Grant's death asking you don't think I did this to you does it look like I did this so that's another sign right there of total guilt like does it look like I did this do you think I did this does do you think I murdered Grant uh, yes mm. so you wouldn't have to ask that question if you were innocent Right. It was the and it was the week of. It was the week that Grant. It was so that happened on a Monday. So um, the hair salon has contacted us, and I know that he was in there on the next day getting a haircut and not acting at all like anything had happened. And then I find out he's was calling the ex husbands or people in the church like Sam. I'm sure people like that. But he definitely called my ex husband, the ex husband of one of my very good friends, and asked, "Does it look like I did this? Do you think I did this?" I, do we need to add any more to this? Do I need to embellish any more? Did I really mess? You know, does it look like I did this? Does it look like I killed Grant? Do you believe I killed Grant? That's not a question you ask. It's the week of his service. All I could think of was just foot to foot. Right. Yeah. You don't even bring. You don't bring it up. Do you think I killed him? It's like you don't bring that up. No. He put. He's putting feelers out there to see if he did a good job at right. it. And, you know, some of them are just going to say, oh, no, no, I don't know what was said in that conversation. I just know that it I know for a fact it happened. And basically what's happening is in an investigation, you know, I don't put all my eggs in one basket. And I do have we do have plans to file against him. And when we do that, it will open up 
uh, an opportunity for subpoenas. And when we open up an opportunity for subpoenas, then we're going to be able to bring in the people and do the job of law enforcement that should have been done initially. So everyone that's done anything will be on the list of subpoenas, including now everyone that we're finding out now that he went to that week asking, did it look like I did this? Does it look like I killed my son? Do you, do you think I killed my son? So, but the, the whole goal is we've not been able to, to, we've not been able to even seek a subpoena for any of these people like Sam Johnson, who was at there trying to convince me or, and uh, that it happened. He had, he had a monument built on the, Sam Johnson had a monument built out of rock on the opposite side of the ditch to show me where Grant was lying and mark it forever on the opposite side of the ditch. This is weird. And I said, the blood is over here. No, 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 you don't. No, no, no. It's right. It's right here. So I let him, and then Aaron tried to explain his ex explanation of what happened and how he saw him. And I said, you, but you said you didn't see him. You never saw him. You never went to him. True. I never went to him. I do why he says that. It's because he was there first. Yeah. And he left him. Right. He saw him. That's why he knew he was laying like he was on a pillow. That's why, which is, this is, and his arms were like this. That's called a remorse kill. It's a psychopathic remorse kill. They put them comfortably when they're finished. I didn't know that. His and arms his, were like this? Yeah, like his arms were like this. And Oh, wow. And uh, th that's actually what the paramedic told me when he looked. He said, you could not see Grant until I got all the way up and under the front bumper. And when I got up and under the front bumper, I could see him. And he was laying there with his hands like that. And I just had the coaches run up on it because on the videos that I made of him, which there's a YouTube channel, I think it's, it's not my channel, but it's fine. It's called Justice for Grant. And they put all those videos of Aaron that I videoed that week where Sam Johnson is keeping him on his narrative. At one point, Sam Johnson corrects him. Aaron says, what well, was like this? And Sam goes, no, 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 remember? So oh. he, he tried really hard to keep him. They had a narrative to go over and, and Sam kept him on it. Um, but they put all the videos that I made of Aaron that week on all together, strung together. And I think it's about 57 minutes, but there's a piece in there that's only 58 seconds long. And it's where I asked him, I was like, I don't understand. He was laying like this and I was very straight up. And he goes, no, 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 no. He was laying like, like this and he's sideways and he leans up just a little. He's like, more like his head is on a pillow. And immediately I knew he did it. I mean, I already knew it, but I knew right then. I was like, you placed him on a, you placed him comfortably because you couldn't stand what you had done at that point. Now you, you and he said his arms were like, you know, like this, but I, but you've never been down there. You didn't go down there. Well, but that's because right. he was down there before. And that's why he's able to go back and forth between, I was never down there. Oh, he looked like this. I saw his red baseball shirt, or I saw this, or I saw that or the truck, you know, he's under the truck or the truck was not stable. You know, you, I said, why didn't he lift the truck off of him? Oh, the truck wasn't stable. How would that, did you know the truck wasn't stable? The paramedic said he could have put his arms under Grant's shoulders and just pulled him out because nothing was on him, but he didn't because they already were jacking up the, the front bumper so that they could bring him out on, on a board. But he never went to him. And I've talked to several, uh, criminal defense attorneys that defend the criminal. And they've said it's classic when they don't go to the person that's hurting, that needs help, which is human nature to go to anyone, a stranger, or anyone. Yep. It's because they are afraid that the victim will still be alive enough to tell someone or identify that he did it. And he also made up three people that weren't even there. That nobody has seen before. Now somebody, so, uh, see, I was talking to someone They came up with a really good point because he said that uh, okay, one of the employees of the two things that are important, one thing he's hinged everything on, there was a, ba there was a meeting, a baseball that they had a, an appointment. And this employee said that runs WPI, Ward Performance Institute, for the owners said Grant didn't have an appointment that day. So it was a complete luring him out there. 
Mm -hmm. And um, an hour away from home to a desolate part of Gallatin that's undeveloped. Uh, I mean, it has a bait shop and a liquor store within the, within 300 yards or 400. But he didn't have an appointment. The other thing was that the the person that worked in war performance said he did see some men out there and they had on construction. He said, well, wait a minute. When I look at the pictures, all I see is construction vest. The police all have on, I need a charger. The police ha all have on construction vest. He said, what if those guys were the police and they came early to help him and oh. then they just blended into the crime scene? That so I could see that. That's possible. That's possible. I could too. That's possible too. Yeah. There was no say, cameras oh, in that building, right? No, they 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 stressed that the cameras were on the inside. Mm. So, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. But but still, the other thing that Grant had none of was uh, def like uh, defensive wounds. Grant didn't fight the truck. He didn't fight whoever hit him. He didn't. And that's not Grant. Grant would have fought the truck. He would have won. He was huge. He was athletic. Exactly. He would not have allowed the truck to trap him. Also, in order to be drugged by something, something has to hang somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Something right. has to hang to drag you. Nothing on Grant was back. I saw every back of his legs, front of his legs, feet, everything. Shoes and, shoes and socks were on him and intact. There was nothing about Grant that, there was nothing that showed any, his clothes were intact. They had to cut them off. They were just laying, right. they were laying just cut off of him on the on the side of the bed. And I don't want to get too dramatic, but, uh, or say things that are difficult for people to hear, but in a, in a level one trauma setting where you've been dragged, I promise you, you're going to drip because you have road rash that goes to the bone. That's what a, drag, a vehicle yeah. dragging looks like. So your bed sheets are going to be sat saturated and the, you're going to, have to keep changing them over and over and over. There was no saturate. There was nothing. There was no blood. There was the only place there was blood was in his mouth where his hair, which that tells me at some point he had to be turned upside down to be carried over someone's shoulder because the blood should have drained gravity wise. It should have gone down from the injuries, but instead yeah. it came over the top of his head. So yeah, that makes that makes no so sense. Everything, mm -hmm. and the, and there was Sam Johnson right in the middle of it. George just, you know, mansplaining it and trying to pat me and touch me and you know make me out to be some frail thing. And I'm like, look, I'm fine. But then at one point during me videoing Aaron, he goes, "Are you okay with being videoed?" And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told her it was fine." And then he just stops calling. I have another question uh, that I'm also confused by. So Grant gets out of the truck, right? And it's it, it he walks around to get his baseball bat out of the back. Is that correct? That's what, that's well, that's what, Aaron, what Aaron said. That's what he says. Yeah. And then his truck, and then the truck started moving after he. It was like sec. It takes a few seconds to get out of the truck, walk to the back, reach into the, and then all of a sudden it starts to move. That's what he's saying. It. That doesn't happen. Though, where's the bat? We, we tested the truck and we left it in uh, neutral and put our, I took my foot off the brake, you know, like you were going to get out. And when I opened the yeah. door, the truck was already moving so fast that I immediately, your right. instinct is to slam your foot on the brake. The other thing is that Grant never right. kept his, Grant had no reason to be behind his truck. He does not keep, his baseball gear is golden. <laughs> okay, it's protected. Okay, it's protect. That's fine. It's. I'm probably gonna go dark here, but, but um, yeah. There we go. Thank you. But it's it's protected, and um, it's in it's a king cab, and he's in the back of his um, like the back, the the second door. So he would have yeah. no reason to be back behind the truck. Sam tried to explain to me on that video how. Grant was back there trying to stop the truck and went behind it. I was like, you know, I said, Grant, well, get out of the way. Exactly. That's why it makes right. no, I mean, no right. sense. And also, if you study um, 
like Grant falling, uh, and a, a truck hitting Grant and Grant falling on the pavement. That would be like a truck hitting a log. The truck is going to roll over the log. So yes, yeah. it would have rolled over him, but it would have left the log in the parking lot. So it, yeah. all, everything about this is not, it's just not possible. And as a mother, all I want to know is what happened to my son. And if it happens to be the only witness, then so be it. And, and that, that, but, but they are blocking me from even knowing any, knowing what happened to him, which is insanity. Just like they there any, uh, Is there any evidence still? Like, do they collect that rock with the blood on it? Do they have, like, do they have any of it? Gracie did. Gracie found it. It was buried. All those rocks were buried about three rock layers deep in that riprap, those big giant rocks. And Gracie and I went back out there by ourselves and she started digging right where Grant's head would have been. Oh, wow. And she found, we found all of them. So we've got it all. We brought it home and our dog at the time, Babby, he passed sh real shortly after Grant, but we brought, we, he was um, a boxer too, but he, we brought him, we brought it home and I've, I've always heard an animal could smell their owner's blood and, but I'd never seen it. And he just, he'd been looking for and then there now he smelled him on the rocks but yes we have we have everything collected and i have it hidden also that's also hidden undisclosed location but we have a chain of command on the um on all of the belongings some of them are is still uh have they've all been forensically um the same forensics on the truck those same people did, did my forensics on all the other items as well the baseball hat the shoes the socks um there's no blood on any of it. It's just not po right. nothing's possible. And that hat would have been the first thing to go. You know, that hat's not going to stay on his head, but the hat is lying right beside where he was, and his cell phone is lying right beside his hat. In the pictures from the police department under the truck, you can see his hat lying. Then the cell phone is on, and it's not damaged. Like it should. The pictures show it damaged. It's not damaged. And you can actually see, you know, like on Life 360, which he was following using that morning. You can actually see his destination, like it's like green or something. Like there's a green dot of where your destination is that lights up different than the red path. You can see the red path mm -hmm. to the green dot, and the phone is on in the police picture. Um, the thing about that, well, you're talking about the phone earlier. You asked me about the phone. You're confused. So what happened was everything was left in the ditch. The police, everybody left the scene. They called a mom and pop tow truck that just took the truck. Nothing was impounded. Aaron was blaming Toyota the whole time. Um, right. or, and Grant, typical Toyota and Grant. And then, but it was never uh, looked at forensically by Toyota and the police didn't impound it to make sure that if this had, truck was malfunctioned, then it wouldn't hurt someone else, which is law. So yeah so i hadn't even thought about the glasses the hat and the phone and maybe i wouldn't have except that um hannah just grant's girlfriend her mother the next morning saw it driving saw that phone driving around gallatin and hendersonville on on hannah's life 360 because they had the same so she was calling the sheriff's department because to us, the phone is stolen. Well, Aaron had me going to the memorial home that day, planning the service. And when I walked in, there was two Grace Chapel folks sitting, Steve's right and left hand sitting at the end of the table. Hmm. But I walked straight in and said, Grant's phone is driving around Hendersonville and Gallatin. I, Hannah's mother's calling the, sheriff, calling the police right now. And he's like, no, 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 no. Just give me five minutes. So he gets up and he goes out comes back in, he says, got the phone, his hat that I hadn't even asked about and his, and his sports gods. And I'll go pick them up this afternoon. And I'm like, that, uh, that is another red flag. How in the world did you just produce this? Well, if I'm going to plug up my phone real quickly, but if you notice in the, um, in his speech at the memorial service, he says that that phone 
was found. Oh dear, what have I done? I think I'm turning myself into something. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> and then I, saw was, I saw animals. But if you know, if you know, black. If you You're know, good. In the um, in his speech at the at the memorial service, he says that the that the, that all those three items were recovered by a person who didn't know Jesus or God, and they because they found these things, they've now come to God. So that's a Grantly thing, and Grant was already teaming up with the ultimate coach in the. What? Well, he says in the uh, in his in his speech, but then he goes on to say that this man that's now come to God uh, has knew his best friend Lee and called Lee and gave the items to Lee, who then gave the items to Aaron. Now, where this gets interesting is that Lee is Aaron's former news anchor, who's still in the news here, Holly, in the mornings, her husband. And instead of taking those items to the police, which Holly would know as a reporter and a news anchor, that those items are part, of, that could be part of an investigation, they just handed them over to Aaron. And at some point, someone smashed the front of the phone. Oh. So I think Freedom for Gracie called her out, Holly out on that last week. That when was she going to talk about the fact that it was her husband who ended up with Grant's belongings? And in, instead of responding, she did what everyone else has done, blocked everyone, uh, took the ability to comment on her page off. So there you go. And that's, uh, they do live out in Sumner and Hendersonville. And did she, I she's read a news anchor. correctly that he did not want an autopsy done that's right so um before i wasn't thinking about papers but it took me an hour to get there and before i could um before i got there so they they pronounced grant at the hospital papers say they pronounced him dead at 9 26. i mean he was he's so young that they they should have worked on him for hours but instead um the ER doctor said that she called it at 9.26 because of the time which mm -hmm. means out assisted blood flow to brain, mm -hmm. the brain and other parts of the body. So no CPR. Mm -hmm. But by 9.35, seven minutes late, like, I'm sorry, it was 9.28 when she pronounced. Seven minutes later, by seven minutes later, done and complete, Aaron had filled out the final release form for the body. He was offered an autopsy. He declined it. He was offered a post-mortem exam, which is not as invasive as an autopsy. He declined it. Organ don donation was contacted. They came, they told him that all of Grant's organs were donatable, which also makes the story that Aaron's told completely impossible, but all of his organs were donatable. He refused that. And he signed the body away to Williamson Memorial Funeral Home, which is the funeral home that worked hand in hand with C. Berger and Grace Chapel. And all of that was done in seven minutes of Grant's death. The actual fuck. And then for three months after that, I consistently asked Aaron, were you offered an autopsy? Even that day, were you, no, no, I was not, no. Because you, you weren't, you couldn't do that? I mean, when I got there, when I got to the hospital, all I was, all I wanted to see was my son. Right. Um, I wasn't, th I wasn't thinking about you papers. You weren't clear, he thinking shouldn't clear either, right And I am a parent and yeah. they should have also given me the opportunity to answer the same questions that they had given Aaron and right. the hospital did not. Um, yeah. As a matter yeah. of fact, when I went to get the medical records, which I was doing really quickly, because I was afraid they would be altered or changed or um, lost. When I went to get those, um, I had to prove that I was his mother first. I had to prove mm -hmm. that I was not with his father, that he lived with me. So I gathered all this documentation, his birth certificate, everything. And my, my friend Melanie, who you see on the videos, we drive out there. The, the head of the department of the hospital's human resources comes down, 
She's like, I need to see your proof. And then she looks at it and goes, oh my God, we let the wrong person make end of life decisions. And that's Wait. how it happens. What? Aaron had told them there's no mother. But I wondered why they Whoa, acted what? so strange when I showed up. But like, that's why, that's why we have to get this out there because if that was presented in court. Right. We have everything for you. We just don't have an investigation, which I'm going to have to, I know. with your all's help, which I, before you think we end any call, I want to just, first of all, I want to thank, like I lay in bed at night and I cannot believe all you guys are out here helping us. I really can't. I can't. I just. I don't, I, all your, and all your people, I, I, I feel you. I see you. I read the comments. I, I just want to make sure that I fully get across my thanks to all of you. Uh, when George first released his, his first video, I almost fell off. I just fell over because mm -hmm. Grant had told me about George. There's a kid at school being bullied and he was angry and he said he's not going to be bullied around when i'm around or if i see it and grant was three grades younger but he was not going to let this person that he told me so much about be bullied and then i put together when george releases a video that that's who grant was talking about so i know i just can't thank you all enough and right now we have everything we need we, the more and more pressure we can put on north carolina uh the the governor um the well more i pressure live we in, put here in I, I live in the capital of north carolina so if maybe we could maybe something like that but um the bottom line of this is if if this doesn't happen i need to go ahead i'm going to go ahead and move forward with my own investigation and, yeah. and it's really our investigation now. It's all of us together. Mm -hmm. We're going to move mm -hmm. forward with our investigation. We're going to move forward with our own exhumation and autopsy. We'll move forward with our accident reconstruction. We've already got a plan in place. Like I said, my eggs aren't all in one basket to have a position to be able to do the subpoenas. We'll move forward with our subpoenas. And then it's right. some, and then this will be taken where it has to be taken to get justice. Um, and that's 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 my full intent. And the, you know, right now Tennessee and George can attest to this. I know. Uh, look how much publicity. Look how much you all have done. Look how much. Look, look how many people are uh, know about us or seeing us all over the world and and want to help. But yet here at here in Tennessee, they none of, nobody here acts like this is even going on, which is so yeah. bizarre. But. And it's, we, it's true, isn't it, George? It's like, it is, yeah. it's insane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the reason that, like, uh, when um, Ven first reached out to me about it, he was like, how do we get this out? And I was like, I know a good person like Mikey. This is his thing. This is, you know, true crime. He has a lot of followers. He's an amazing person, one of my mm -hmm. favorite TikTokers. And I knew that he could cover it in a good way. And um, I think we need to get just, creators to 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 get people to follow this story uh we can get we can get a gofundme set up uh like always we can do we can i can help with that um but we need big creators to be posting about this so well mikey Mikey's generosity and love and him jumping right in yeah. there, me watching the passion in his He jumped right in. But like, when we wa when I watch the passion in his videos, it's just so uh Yeah. I'm just blown away by everyone's just true goodness. And you know, good things do come from all things. And the one thing that is good that's come from this <laughs> is that you all have shown me that there are good people in the world still. Because I lost faith in that one and and I always believe people were like me and saw the world like I do and loved like I do. And that was a terrible mistake to make. People don't love like I do, but I found people that do. And it really is redeeming for me and for Gracie to see people that are good people 
that love back. And I have to give a shout out to Ethan out there. He's not on this call, but Ethan jumped in and he helps with scheduling and helps keep us keep support Gracie and I make sure that we have uh, where, where, where are we supposed to be or checking in or answering emails and takes a lot off my plate. And he's messaging me right now saying that the, I should also say that the daily mail is coming out uh, next week with a full article and the sun is the sun as well within the next two. Oh, yes. Uh, Brian Enton is um, on the table to be coming this way. Um, <gasps> as well as Nancy Grace has been in contact. So, uh, Oh, awesome. Until I see it happen. If right, you've got Brian Enton on the case. Yeah, yes. He's already, he's in direct okay. contact with Ethan and he's, is um, part of what determines when someone comes or not. So when the news cycle fits right, Brian said he would be up here within the next couple of weeks. Cool. Also, I made a mistake about. I do also have. Um, Sorry, Mike. I do also have a kind of connection with Investigation Discovery. I've worked with them before. Um, I I know they've I know they put an article about Grant's story, but they haven't actually make any video type no. like things. Correct. Right. I wish they would. Okay. But yes. No, they haven't. And um, right. And the and the more and more. People that become aware, I'm, I also know that God is working in a way that is, you know, that he is timing, this is being timed to, to not just to help Grant and Gracie, but to help millions of children across the world. And I've got to, and I want to accept that. I, I know that's, I know Grant knew that. And I know Grant made a choice to protect his sister. I know that, um, and me, but I know he was, I know he chose the path, his path, and that is our job to walk it to see this through, so that we can continue the heroism that Grant had. We had all planned together, but that yeah. Grant really walked every day, and that's mine. And Gracie and I fully intend to carry on his his legacy and his goals in that regard. But um, but I fully believe that the more attention we can get a larger opportunity we're going to have to help without going into it too much. Um, and George and I fully believe that so, so many children and uh, women, men, um, marginalized communities, it's, it's not about oppression. It's not, it's not just <laughs> about us. Uh, I grant, Justice for Grant opens up, opens the onion and starts peeling back the layers to help all of these other communities. And we will see that when that happens. Um, but it, uh, it's just very important that, it's just very important to me that I, that first of all, justice and safety, but peace. You know, Gracie has lost her peace and I want her to have that peace but after that, it's uh, <coughs> continuing the work that Grant, which is to continue to peel back the layers of the onion and expose the people that don't want him to be investigated. And I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm I, had thought. I was just going to say uh, the links are all in everyone's bios. Um, Thank you. Uh, Bam, uh, Beham, Beham, Birmingham, Blue Dot. It should be in hers, also in Mikey's, also in Angie's. I'm gonna help Ben to get his set up too. Um, and I'll get all the links put in mine as well. And if anyone needs help doing that, let me know if they would like, like, help to add it to their, um, I have to their, I don't their have thing. Just let me know. Yeah, that was all. <laughs> George, did you say? Oh yeah, I was just gonna say I have the link in my bio. I don't, I don't have like a link tree, but it. Uh, so think I mean, I'm, I'm such a big fan of you and Gracie, you know, and I um, 
I don't know. I'm just, I'm very in awe of you both and your strength and yes. your fight in this journey to get justice for Grant, you know, and we will, is the, you know, like I, I have full confidence and hope that we will and Grant and Gracie will get the justice that they deserve, you know, so. Thank you. And I, I, you know, I wanted to say that I, I, if this statute of limitations thing expires, right, I don't want you guys to lose hope because there is no statute of limitations on murder. So there will always be a way to get them. Even if, even if one thing kind of runs its course, there is still uh, an absolute path to getting this guy yep. um, and making him pay for what he did. Wait, what? Gracie's Gracie's almost asleep, but what is she? Oh, she read a comment that there's an exception for minors on the Man Act, and that may be true. But uh, but also there the, should be. I wanted to, I wanted to the just, safe charge. Also, um, it, there's a there's a there's one of my followers, Moonshine, and she's been really supportive of everything. And she mentioned earlier today that there might be a way to extend the August 15th statute of limitations. Um, she sent me some information. I'm sure she can contact you with that. She did a lot of research. I'm not sure how true that is, but it's something to look right. into because it's very important that 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 we get him at least questioned and investigated before that date um you know and i just you know i mikey took out absolutely like for whatever these people are so insidious and they are so like defensive of each other that unfortunately you know that august august 15th date could come and pass unfortunately and you know we can do everything we can to try not to but mikey's so right like no matter what there's like angie has made sure there is so many different avenues mm -hmm. and we have to just be able to try to help her the best we can be like just like lindsay said earlier you know gracie needs to stop having to keep repeating this story and look at what angie did tonight for two hours guys and i'm just yeah so unbelievably moved and honored to be part of this and i just want to just remind everyone a dollar anything spread this share this to everyone you know um let's try to find any social medias in any way to blow up what grace chapel academy and try to get um grant's uniform is back to gracie and angie um i know a lot was covered tonight i i will i will I, I will stop ranting i just want to say those you know two things that like i think are really important is the gofundmes because she needs to she needs to do this investigation herself and she needs a rest and to be able to compose herself and two um, we need to get grace and angie back grants right? things as as anyone mutuals with muscles i know i think i am on one of my accounts but it might have gotten banned he would definitely cover this. I'm not yeah. mutuals with him, so I, I can also try to reach out to him. Yeah, he's a he's he a TTI survivor. Also, he'd love to cover this. Yeah. I saw in the comments where it was talking about like Aaron being on dating apps and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so like I was gonna Do say Dolly too. Yeah, yeah, like uh, he is on dating apps like Grinder and probably Tinder and he all of that Tinder. stuff. And he uh, he used picture and so like honestly, i'll say that so like it's not it's not on any anyone but like if this is widespread and like you see this and like you're on a dating app and you see racy solomon's picture or like aaron you should totally dm that to us <laughs> wait he's that, using Gracie's that is the photo? most insane thing i've ever heard yeah. what yeah He's using Gracie's photo to to meet men or who is Aaron? What? Uh, that's uh, I didn't know that. That's I don't uh, even know what to say about that. It's bad. Yeah. Let me let me. Can I clarify this a little bit for your audience? Um, I just want to be clear because I think it sounds like he's using Gracie's photo to catfish people and stuff. That's not the case. He's 
He's got these disgusting yeah. pictures on Grinder. I know that Lindsay's done some great content on that and has the picture. George has the picture. Uh, I know Angie does too, but he is his grinder picture and his profile. He in the top left corner, his profile is of Gracie. So when he's on Grinder and these social media apps and Tinder, there's a what? gross picture of him naked or a D picture, a dick picture, guys. And we have these pictures. Like uh, Lindsay is, you know, her 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 content's amazing, guys. She. Brings the receipts for 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 Angie and, and Gracie and stuff, and and is on top of this, and yeah, those he's got naked pictures of himself on dating apps, including Grinder. Um, All right. Well, we're gonna get to, we're gonna he's get got this a picture of his, of his daughter, yeah. and he's gonna be. He's also been known. This is this is just what I've heard. This is not no one hears. I'm just saying what I've heard. But um, the, the, the Franklin YMCA is a sauna that I, I know he's met people at. Brentwood. Brentwood. Yep. That's just what I've heard. Yep. Oh, Brentwood. I'm sorry. I've heard Brentwood. My bad. <sighs> the YMCA there. So he's out there. He's a predator. He's dangerous to the whole community. And seeing him at the College World Series with all those children yeah. was terrifying. Also, like, he also and I'm so glad that, like, Bigger creators like you, Mikey and Lindsay, and everyone is 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 is, is blowing that up because we have eyes on him. He can't get away. Like this is not just protecting Gracie and Angie and George. This is protecting other children out there. Right. He's still alone. and believe me, well, he's not doing this alone, guys. They know. Well, and it's it's. I don't think it's just children too. I think any anywhere he goes, uh, a woman is in danger at a bar. For example. Yes. You know, normal mo after the, after a call after a sports event would be he's traveling alone. He would go back to the hotel bar. He's going to befriend a woman. He's pay, buy her a drink, and when she looks the other way, he's pouring something in there. And then next thing, she wakes up in his room the next morning. So he's he's roofing and graping, graping. We've got women all over Nashville that have come forward. So it's both. It's everything all the time. And he's just walking out there free as a bird. Yes. Yes. Because I'm, and you know, because in court he's made, you know, what I say is not true. Maybe he paid millions of dollars to pr produce a narrative that I'm a liar, mentally ill, suicidal. When all that didn't That's work, exactly he to, like he went I to know drug we, addiction. I know which we is, talked which about is what's this. happening right now, actually, yes. in our country, a lot in a, in divorce courts. Ow. But um, but back when it happened to me, I didn't know about anybody else. But that's the first thing they want to say is, well, uh, uh, or Angie's a liar. So he's, he's getting away with harming other women and children because they're calling me a liar. And it's the same thing they've used against my, ch my own children. They've used me against them, which is incredibly painful. But he, the picture he drew of me in domestic court, then they go and say, oh, well, you can't trust anything she says. She's a liar. So he set it up perfectly. So you know what could be fun? It's like some Lorena you know Bobbitt shit. Yeah, but I know what, what I know. What could be fun for me is I can make you know videos about this, and I dare him to come out of the shadows and say he'll sue me for a defamation or or whatever, and and he can do that. And you know what that means is that means that we can present evidence in the court of law. That's right. Against him, so it's That's almost right. like. I, I happily too. coax the piece of crap out so he can threaten to sue me. Yeah. <laughs> just so. That's actually like, okay. a really good idea because then that but would lead to him having to, be, him having to be questioned on everything else. Yes. But someone that's asked exactly... a few minutes ago if he's openly bisexual, no. But everyone in Franklin knows he, he, he is. But he's not open. But he, he is. Everyone knows he is. Right. Okay. Has anyone made a fake Tinder? Probably. I'm sure he's on TikTok. I'm sure he can see all this. You think he's watching this right now? Probably. Hey, bud. So, <laughs> what do we do? So, what do, what do we do? About, uh, what do we do about Grace Chapel? Don't like, go. I mean, don't go. That's it? No, I mean, no, no, I think, no. I think Grace Christian is the 
key there, Grace Christian Academy, the Sorry, just so much harm to people. And, and I want to say they're separate. At that time, the church and the school were one. And the church and the school were run by, all the decisions were ultimately made by Steve Berger, the, pa the, the pastor. Right. He calls yep. the pastor. Although, mm -hmm. and then the school, Robbie Mason, everyone would dish out the, follow the, follow the orders of Steve. Um, right. So whatever the school did at that time, the church is a part of, or, and this, whatever the church did, the school is a part of, and they're tied together in any lawsuits or anything like that, that might come up. Mm -hmm. um, right now they want to, after Gracie released her video, they had this major uprising and a uh, overreaction to what she, you know, she called C Berger out in her video that she made on YouTube that he had lied over her brother's casket and he did. And that sent him, him into a rage where we were talking last time about him praying, asking people to pray imprecatory prayers and uh, of harm to us and our in, and our people who supported us and all of these things, which is basically just means disease and your hair falling out and teeth falling out. But then he abruptly and he and his wife have a commotion during the Sunday service and they leave the church. And now they've you know gone on to Washington to pursue his goal of pastoring, I don't know, I really don't pay attention to him, but I just know that he's not in Washington all the time. He's here in Franklin, but he's not right now. So he's a Christian nationalist. I, I don't know enough about that topic to say he is, but I've heard people that I respect say that he is. Yeah, okay, yeah, that means he's dangerous. Oh, oh yeah, well, listen, he had snipers in the catwalks during the services. Jesus fuck. Yes. Snipers. What? In the catwalks during the church services. Mm -hmm. hmm? It's been really, really real reputation. I are saying what do you mean these people are <laughs> No. And like I don't even know how far I mean like I remember too like Steve Berger paying because uh Sam Johnson's family disclosed to me that uh, Steve Berger paid around, if not more than $100,000 to go to DC and have lunch with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Yes, That's, I heard and, that. Too. Well, it's also so believed like, that he, you know, he was there on January 6th. Yeah. And he also, <laughs> uh, it's also believed that he uh, paid for grant service. So mm. somebody at that some he or the I, I, I'm going to find out that's another subpoena in the lawsuit, but I will find out who, who paid for Grant's service, right? They don't want to tell me, but they will tell me. But well, it was Steve Berger, to... it was Steve Berger, or it, it was Steve Berger that paid for Grant's service. You think there's a reason why? I do. And then they surprised Aaron. They were like, oh, look, you know, you don't have to, Aaron's a multimillionaire. And I've never seen him act like he was crying. I've never seen him cry. I've never seen him act like he was crying. He but when she said, for Aaron, right? Aaron, Aaron is a multi multi-millionaire. And she, he, um, she said, uh, Pam Stevens, the owner of the Williams Memorial at that time, who's, who's since also sold, she said, uh, who's got, now who do I need to talk to about the bill? And I said, well, Aaron, he's got all the money. He's got the millions, you know? So she looked at him and she goes, okay, it's, you know, the total cost of the, that Angie's picked for the service and for everything she's picked for Grant is, and she gave the total and it was, it was up there. And then, uh, he said, uh, it was, she said, but the good news is someone else has paid for this and I can't tell you who, and she shredded the paper in front of him. And then he proceeded to act like he was having the things. My friend Melanie and I were watching this go on and we're like, you know, over, over 25,000, he's going to, this is what he's going to do, but he put on a really good show for that, but we'll find out. I think it was, I'm sure it was Steve Berger, but yeah. And I don't think, I do think there's a reason why. I don't think there's a, it's just out of the goodness of their hearts. No. Mm -mm. No. 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 It's to help, no, out with the <laughs> help out with the problem they created. Well, um, I, I'm going to go to bed because I need to work early, but I think, um, you know, we'll just contact some bigger creators that do stuff like this 
And well, you guys are huge, so don't just. I mean, listen, I, 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 I get banned like every month, so, um, <laughs> if I make a video about this, I'll probably get CGB, but I'll try. I'll try. Okay. Gracie's about to go to sleep, but I know she wants to tell you all bye and thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry. I'm like, bye, Gracie. You're welcome, Gracie. Oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> you look gorgeous. God. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. oh, thank you. I'm like half awake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but there's friends. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye, Angie. Thanks for bye -bye, uh, dear. inviting bye. me. I just so appreciate you all. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's no problems whatsoever. Yeah, thanks, Mikey, for uh, hosting again. Angie, thank you. Thank Grace, you, George. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to see you guys next week. I know, we're gonna have dinner. I, yeah. I, 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 I feel like so Grace <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, 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 I'm so indecisive. That's not true. Yes, it is. She, it, you could catch her right before a race, and she's she's at any Italian restaurant in town. Oh, oh there we go. Sideways. Things are happening here. Well, that sounds perfect. We can do Italian. <laughs> oh, hey, buddy. I know Italian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, oh, I know. Here, hang on. Trevor didn't get any hair. Trevor. Trevor, come here. There's Trevor. <laughs> Yeah. Aww. Okay, hold on. Bring me pot. Oh. Wow. Come here, Trevor. Trevor, come here. You he can't get Come on, Trevor. Come on. Max is in the way. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> That's a good show. That's a good picture right there. <laughs> I know, Max. I, I, know, I know. I know. I know. It's okay. <laughs> go bed? You gotta go bed? Max senses uh, if someone's upset, tired, oh. upset. Oh, Trevor, if you, Trevor, if you Trevor. cry in the... Oh, look at this. Look at Trevor. He's got... A, he's on top of the chair. This is our life, guys. This is it right here. I can relate. I've got, I've got eight, eight of them. So I can... <laughs> eight. He's smart. He stays in the comfy chair. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> but I really appreciate you all. I love you all. I love, love you all you. from here. I'm we love you guys. You all prop me up, and I just thank you so much. Oh, I'm here if you I need. Here for I know Grant loves you too. I know he's with all of you. Grant's army. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Grant's army. Yeah, we're here for you. Just, just reach out. We're here for you. I will. All right. All right. Thank you, True Crime Mikey, thank so you. much. Like Thanks, seriously, Mikey, you're so welcome. Much. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Thank you, George. Thank Thanks, you. <laughs> thank you, Gracie. You are the so brave. <laughs> Such an inspiration. Like I never like to someone your age, Gracie. Wow. Um <laughs> just never in my wildest <laughs> imagination could I imagine someone having the strength you have. Thank it's, you so inspiring and like like we i said earlier and i'll say it again like we're, we're gonna go through a wall for you <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> we want a cat oh he's the best oh, oh, my. Finn. It's he's Finn. so energetic he likes to talk to yes oh now trevor, <laughs> trevor. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, yeah. hey, okay. Shh. Shh. Oh, I brought where my spirit animal. Oh, look, there's an. Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> hey, so good. Oh, the pets. Yes, a good boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, you guys yeah. get some rest. And we do love some our care. Okay. Yeah. We love you all. <laughs> Hang in here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We'll see all right, you guys have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for everyone for coming on. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>